This might be the best micro SD card that you can plug into your Raspberry Pi, full stop. It does have a drawback that will likely prevent many of you from purchasing it though, so let's talk about it. Like many of my fellow home lab enthusiasts, I too tinker with my network crack all the time, which often results in some parts of the home network being, well, unavailable. Now this is not particularly a big deal for me, but the missus ain't too happy about it, not to mention the kids and their damn Fortnite. So what I did in order to solve this problem is decide that I'll put mission critical services such as DNS and DHCP on a separate device that I already had lying in my drawer. You guessed it right, it was a Raspberry Pi. Now, because I value aesthetics of my gear, I couldn't just put it in a plastic enclosure. Instead, I got myself a real nice one made of aluminum called Flirk. Flirts? Flirk? I don't know. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Without giving it much, <laughs> without giving it much thought, I bought the first generic SanDisk branded micro SD card that I found in the nearest electronics store. Then I installed the operating system following the official documentation and finally the Pi hole and a DHCP server. Once I was done, I put it on a shelf in my network rack and was ready to forget all about it. And I did, at least for a couple of months. But then the micro SD card died. I didn't think much of it at the time because I'm well aware that these things die. So I went back to the electronics store and just got myself a new one. I think the exact same one that died on me a day before. Took me almost no time to set it back up the exact same way as I did the first time around. The only thing I added to the process was a backup of the image once it was all installed, just in case. I probably don't even need to explain what happened a few months later. Yep, it died too. Now I don't know about you, but one of my venting mechanisms is Twitter. X, Twitter. Without expecting any replies, I tweeted something about poor quality of micro SD cards and to my surprise and not long after, a mate of mine who is a networking engineer tweeted back that I should try an industrial grade card. I've heard about industrial parts before, but I'll be honest with you, never about industrial grade micro SD cards. Well, apparently they exist. You just won't find them on Amazon and the likes. Instead, you have to look to a more specialized vendor such as Mouser or DigiKey. So I went and reluctantly, I'll get to the reason shortly, ordered myself an industrial grade four gigabyte micro SD card by a brand called ATP that specializes in industrial storage and whom I have never heard of before. When it arrived, I uploaded the OS plugged it into my Raspberry Pi and this time around literally forgot all about it because it's been doing its job ever since. So what makes this card different than the previous ones? Well, the label obviously, it says industrial, but what does that mean? There are other priorities around hardware when it comes to industrial environments and you could say that read and write speeds take a back seat to give room to reliability. In fact, if you compare spec sheets, the SanDisk one doesn't really say anything meaningful apart from read and write speeds and being able to record full HD video. Stuff that isn't really any kind of special accomplishment these days. ATP spec sheet though lists things such as the number of times it can be inserted into a slot, but more importantly, they list their MTBF or mean time before failure. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it's a measure of a reliability of a system or a component. And in ATP's case, these single level cell cards are rated at 5 million hours. And you heard that right? These are single level cell cards. Compared to multi-level cell designs, this means they offer the lowest data density and the consequences are twofold. One, lower capacities and two, higher price. For example, you cannot buy this card in sizes over 8 gigabytes. For that, you have to look at their multi-level or MLC cards. When talking about micro SD cards, we also can't leave out the controller that each has. This controller, well, controls the NAND flash on the card, but on industrial grade cards, it also takes care of other things, such as bad block management and what is called wear leveling. 
The latter is especially important for the longevity of the card as it makes sure that all the blocks have roughly the same amount of writes on them. Because remember, writing to a card is what wears them out. Because of these properties, these types of cards are mostly meant for applications when even replacing them might prove a significant cost to the owner, such as surveillance systems in remote or hazardous environments. And finally, we get to the reason for my reluctance to purchasing this card. And you probably guessed it by now, it's the price. Your normal consumer grade micro SD from Amazon costs around 15 euros for 128 gigs of storage, which comes around 12 cents or 0.12 euros per gigabyte. The ATP card, on the other hand, costs 60 euros for 4 gigs, 120 for 8, which is 15 euros per gigabyte. That is 125 times more. Let that sink in. All of a sudden, those Sandys cards don't seem like such a bad idea, even if they die every once in a while, do they? But in all seriousness, I'm not trying to dunk on Sandisk. In fact, I have a... In fact, I have a... In fact, I have a handful of their cards in my drawer. And I'm recording this very video on one, and I've had it for years without issues. It's because I use it for its intended purpose. And it seems one of the intended purposes of the much more expensive ATP cards is to live happily in my Raspberry Pi. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any kind of questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if you found any kind of value in it, a like would be greatly appreciated. See ya!